Hello on this fabulous Monday morning in Toronto. It's brilliantly sunny. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Victoria Lorian Fabish, and this is Valentine's week. So many people are, you know, crazy about it, lovely about it, hate about it. <laughs> but I want to talk about relationships, and I want to talk today specifically, and I hope you do join me. Hi, everybody out there, about commitment phobia. It's something I see in the office all the time. People are constantly uh, coming in to work with me in my office because they suffer from the inability to connect or feel um, a sense of ease in their relationship, even though the relationship is pretty good. And then they just find themselves concocting excuses to get out of the relationship or another aspect of uh, commitment phobia is where you kind of create like a... Uh, sort of a, a list of, of issues uh, about this person, even though, you know, the, like a shopping list about this person to, to, to get yourself out of it. And frankly, the truth of the matter is, is that many, many relationships that I hear about, someone going through a commitment phobia issue, the truth is, is that they are kind of good relationships, but they find themselves, you know, trying to leave uh, because there's a deep sort of anxiety that shows up. And I find that often the anxiety that shows up is sometimes doesn't make any sense. It will be sort of the, 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 the terrorist words of what if this and what if that and, um, and, and, and usually uh, that person is, you know, not actually making clear logical sense about it. It's, it's kind of like a panic response. A panic response. I don't know if any of you have commitment phobia or, you know, commitment phobia issues regarding relationships. Sometimes it's commitment phobia issues regarding jobs. Sometimes, so it's anything that creates permanence creates anxiety is what, is what, is what commitment phobia is really awesome, off, often about, not awesome, but often about. I find people quite tortured about commitment phobia. Um, there's also this thing that I've noticed as a sort of common element with people who have a lot of commitment phobia is their, ch their family of origin, uh, rather their childhood was kind of traumatic. So anything that is sort of associated with family feeling or a, fi a feeling that is like family, closeness, intimacy, authenticity, um, a sense of uh, lower boundaries, all these types of things, provides the person with like a traumatic, a, a post-traumatic response, like a PTSD response to being in a relationship, any kind of, I'm talking even good relationships. And then that messes with the brain and then the brain starts to do its number with the shopping list of bad things and uh, ways to sort of, um, I find also people with commitment phobia have sort of a perfectionistic sort of grass is always greener on the other side piece. And it's, it's not a happy existence because, you know, it's so fear-based, it's so anxiety-based, and it's also based in a sense of the child is running the show, not the adult. So the, the young part of you, the hurt child, the deprived child, the abused child, the, the child part is the one that's running the life in the, in the present day, and that is... Um, you know, never ideal when your child part is, you know, is running your life. And I like to, to joke, and it's not a joke, but it's like it's ruining your life, essentially. So I find that people who suffer from, from uh, commitment phobic issues tend to sort of do it pervasively through their life, not just in a relationship world, but, but in, in other aspects as well. Friendships, as soon as it gets too close, oh, too close, it's all too close, going to just sort of back it off. And uh, they, they are, tra traditionally, I would say that I've, anyone that's suffered from commitment phobia, they're not happy. They're not happy people. And if you're involved with someone who's commitment phobic, you know, I would be very cautious. In fact, if I'm being honest, I would say run, don't walk. <laughs> run, don't walk. Because you can't change them. They've got to go into therapy. Hi, Mia. They've got to go into therapy. They've got to go into a therapeutic process. So they can work on their um, semi-irrational responses to uh, 
it's, I would call maladaptive connecting. So they're connecting, but they're maladaptive in their connection. And, and there's a, um, a dysregulation of the fight flight response and which is the limbic system, that good old limbic system that I talk about. But the fight flight response is saying, run, leave, get the heck out of there. Even though things are good, but Oh, this is family. So it's like a over coupling concept of uh, over relating to what family used to be like or over relating to the, the very traumatized experience of, thank you, Mia. I appreciate that. Very traumatized experience of relationships, uh, family relationships. And as the person, and I've seen some pretty, um, tough cases of this where people get nearly down sort of the, the planning, the wedding stages, <laughs> the planning the wedding stages and then you know there is this you know all the invitations are sent out and then the commitment phobic person doesn't want to be commitment phobic so they're kind of deceive themselves and others and sadly there's this kind of lying thing that happens you know they're there then they're not then they're there then they're not so push pull and then you know sadly i i did work with someone who was going to go down the aisle with a commitment phobic person and they lied right up until the end and thankfully you know, her therapy with me, she really, really um, woke up to the fact that this is not normal behavior, this sort of push, pull, they're not like you're getting married to this person. What's going on here? Let's 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 get this clear. And thankfully, she pushed and pushed and pushed and got the right information and realized that indeed, um, you know, this was not going to be the right, a good person to be married to, that this would have been a life of not good. So she canceled the wedding. And that's really tough, right? That's kind of a tough thing. But on this week of Valentine's, I like to, I like to tackle these tough to topics on a Monday. Woo. Um, but how, you know, the way out of commitment phobia, if you yourself are commitment phobic, is you got to do some therapy. You got to do some work so that you can undo that connection of trauma and family energy. Because that was in your past when you had no power and when you had no ability to fight or flee. And so you froze and all that trauma froze in your body. But today you're an adult. And as an adult, you can take care of yourself. You can empower yourself. You can draw boundaries. See, because the commitment phobic person is often kind of hiding in their child self. So there's not a lot of honesty. There's not a lot of, I, I need this and I want that. Remember the key questions? What do I want? and What do I need? Those are the ones that are going to lead you to your boundaries. Those are the ones that are going to lead you to your sense of who am I really? Those are the ones that are going to lead you to um, asking for what you need in yourself and in others. So to me, the, the very first steps out of commitment phobia are working on who you are really on your self culture and also working on anxiety with a, with a therapist, work on your anxiety responses. Your anxiety responses are what are leading you to want to get the heck out of there, get the heck out of there, get the heck out of there and are leading you to want to build a shopping list of negatives about the person you're with and are leading you to want to lie or uh, withdraw and not be there. So uh, connection is beautiful. I mean, I love connection with, you know, having a beautiful relationship, but not if you don't feel like you're fully the adult in the relationship. And that is what I feel is the beginning steps out of commitment phobia. And that, that would apply to people who have trouble, you know, um, putting down roots as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of that. I mean, I, I, I have, I love, travel and all that but there is an issue around sometimes people they can't put down roots and so those roots become uh like i gotta get out of here i gotta move <laughs> i got i gotta stop with the deep connections and i gotta i gotta move out of here so uh if you experience that you know pick up my book um books <laughs> find yourself culture i talk a bit about it uh quite a lot about it. It's find yourself culture, moving from depression and anxiety to monumental self-acceptance, and then also connecting, rewire your relationship culture. And you can get that all on my website, visualizationworks.com. And of course, we've got a really good deal on right now. I have a lot of courses, online courses on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. Uh, you can see that on my website, uh, but these are on, but the click of a mouse, you have me teaching you a course on dating in the modern world uh, in a healthy and empowered way, uh, getting over commitment, uh, 
and we talk about commitment phobia. We talked about also in another program about codependency. Also another program we talk about getting over uh, a relationship with a narcissist, a traumatic narcissist. So, and join me every day because I'm going to be here uh, doing some lives around 9, 9.15 uh, on all things relationship this week. And then we'll go on to all things uh, personal empowerment. And, uh, and if, question, if you have questions, also let me know. Okay. So be well, have a fabulous day. And remember, if you are commitment phobic or you're going out or dating someone who is commitment phobic, Number one, if you're dating someone who's commitment phobic, I don't think it's going to work out. <laughs> but if you yourself are commitment phobic, work on your family of origin issues. Work on your deep anxiety issues because that will lead you out of being in a panic state when you are in a state of connection with someone. Okay? All right. Check out my website, visualizationworks.com, and have a fantastic sunny day in Toronto and all over the world. Wherever you may be, have a blessed, wonderful, fantastic day.